slideshow. Slideshow, hang on. All right, from beginning. There we go. Everybody see that? Yep. All right. So we're going to talk about the butterflies of summer. Um, basically, I'm going to talk about basic IDs, identification of our uh, butterflies that we have in our area. Uh, I think all the photographs are taken by me, maybe one or two exceptions, and I have those credited. So I'm not going to get too much in the weeds, but I'll, I'll talk about different butterflies that might you might get confused and just give you an idea of what's around. And I'll talk a little bit about skippers, which are also butterflies. I'm not going to get, uh, they're very confusing, even to me sometimes, but uh, we, won't, we will uh, talk about them a little bit too. So what you're looking at here is the state insect of Virginia. This is the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail. This one happens to be a female, which you can tell by all this blue here. And we'll talk about more, them a little more, but you can see the stripes, tiger stripes. So let's just get into it. Here's a butterfly anatomy. Uh, I'm not gonna, this is just to give you an idea what, what, we what I'm talking about sometimes. I might talk about the margin, which is the edge of the wing here. Uh, antenna clubs other margin we talk about the, the front wing and the and the back wing obviously the the abdomen so uh it's just thing just kind of the vocabulary when you're talking about butterflies okay one thing people say what's a butterfly what's a moth well here's the difference uh sometimes it can be confusing but one thing you need to look at is butterflies more often out in the daytime moths more out in the nighttime but there are day flying moths, so don't, <laughs> you can't see moths in the daytime. But one thing that, that all butterflies have is the knob on the end of their antenna. And moths do not have that knob. They, they're, uh, they can often have a feathery antenna. So that's something to look for. And they'll have, uh, they're not as fuzzy, the bodies of the moths more fuzzy and moths often hold their wings differently. Like this one looks like kind of like a fighter jet or something. Although skippers can do that too sometimes, just confuses. But if you see wings straight up like this, that's going to be a butterfly usually. Okay. Um, I did see a moth in Maine, which I swore was a butterfly. <laughs> but I kept looking through my guide. It, it was a moth. <laughs> I figured it out eventually. It didn't have the antenna knob. I should have noticed that. <laughs> anyway. All right. So let's talk about uh, this is the famous monarch caterpillar which we should start seeing at some point, and it's on the milkweed, because that's what monarch caterpillars eat. Host plants are what caterpillars eat. So that's what we talk about. And monarchs are very specialized. They only eat the milkweed. Other sorts of butterflies will have more of a variety of food they eat. Some of them eat all sorts of things, but uh, a lot of them are, are very specialized. But when they become adults, they're a little less picky. They'll nectar on a wide variety of things. These are monarchs, adults. These are uh, some migrating. I, th I think I took this in Delaware, New Jersey, maybe. But uh, they're feasting on the uh, goldenrod, coastal goldenrod. They love it. And uh, just you just find a, you can find a lot of monarchs on that. Let's uh, talk about monarchs more later. So I love this picture. It's hard out there for butterflies because, can you see that this is a common buckeye. He is having a bad day because this is a spider that has grabbed him. It's a crab spider. Uh, these things specialize in ambushing butterflies. They'll move to a flower and sit there for days and days and Eventually, they, they achieve the same exact color as the flower they're on, as you can see here. That butterfly had no clue. He came in to pollinate this, <laughs> to drink this flower, and uh, he had no chance. They can be either white, any shade of white to yellow, depending on what flower they're on. So uh, that is, so if you see a butterfly sitting at a weird angle like that, it might be <laughs> from a spider. Anyway. Uh, 
All right, so let's talk about it. I talked about the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail at the beginning. Here's a, uh, these actually are both Eastern Tiger Swallowtails, believe it or not. So they can be either yellow or black. Now one field mark you wanna look at is, there's a lot of black Swallowtails and it's kind of confusing to tell them apart sometimes. But these Tiger Swallowtails, when they're black, they do not have spots on their body. You can see no spots. The other ones have spots. And you can also see there's, the wings are see-through. They're sort of translucent. And you can actually see the tiger stripes on the wings. And this one is the yellow version. Now, one thing that's interesting is all black morphs Eastern tiger swallowtails are females. The yellow ones could be either males or females. This yellow one happens to be a male. It doesn't have all the blue down here. That one I showed you at the beginning in the title page had an extensive blue down here near the bottom of the wing. So this uh, males are, are a little more plain. But these black ones, like I say, are all females. Look for the translucent wings, look for no spots on the body. And that'll, that'll help you identify these. Other swallowtails. Here's the uh, spicefish swallowtail. That's probably your second most common dark swallowtail. Uh, this one, just giving you two different looks at it. This one uh, happens to be a hummingbird moth underneath it, caught in the same picture. Kind of photobombed it there. Um, one good thing to look here, you can see this one does have the spots on the body, but look at this here. This is a blue comet. Comet's been in the news lately, by the way, but a uh, blue comet interrupts the orange spots here. So that is something to look for when you're looking at, we call this the top or, or the bottom of the wing. This is the bottom of the wing. This area is the top of the wing. So there's also uh, extensive blue here on the top of the wing and these sort of chevrons. But really, the best, the best field mark is this blue comet right here, if you, want, if you can see the butterfly close. And they're, they're a pretty good sized butterfly. Uh, here's another one. This is the black swallowtail. These are uh, smaller, a, a little bit smaller, I think. The males are easy to tell. They have a lot of yellow. They have this long yellow row of big spots, and then they have another parallel row of smaller yellow spots. And so when you see it fly, you see a lot of yellow on the top. That's, but the, the females are tricky because they're, they're very similar to the spice bush. But uh, you can tell they're a little smaller. They have a little different pattern. So it takes a little practice to look at them. But uh, use your field guide for that one. And here is the reason all of these swallowtails are black. They're mimicking this pipe vine swallowtail. Because pipe vine swallowtails are distasteful to birds. So that's why uh, the tiger swallowtail has evolved a dark morph to kind of mimic this pipe vine swallowtail. And these are pretty easy to tell. They have uh, all this blue. Uh, it's like an electric blue almost on top here. And on the bottom, these really huge orange spots here, just making this nice crescent here. That, that one's pretty easy to tell. And again, it has the spots, as you can see. So uh, yeah, those are all around, all those swallowtails are around. Little practice, you'll be able to tell them apart pretty easily. All right, well, this one is obvious, the zebra swallowtail. These are, these are, uh, I've seen a few of these this year, not a ton, but they uh, host on pawpaws. So if you see pawpaws somewhere, you're likely to see zebra swallowtails because that's where they lay their eggs. This one is a late summer zebra swallowtail. That's why it has such long tails. This one's nice and fresh. I think I photographed this in Loudoun County. Nice long tails. Uh, the earlier season ones don't have as long a tail, so. but obviously it's got zebra stripe. That's why it's a zebra swallowtail. There you go. 
so let's see what else we have. Oh, here's the famous monarch. Now these, this is one of the most famous mimicry situations in nature, right? You got the monarch and then you got the viceroy, which looks almost exactly the same. But if you look very closely, the viceroy has this extra black stripe here, an extra black band parallel to the terminal band. This is the terminal band. And then it's got this kind of median band here. The uh, monarch does not have that. Also, viceroys are a bit smaller than a monarch and they fly a little faster. A monarch will tend to flutter more. But if you can pick up, you can also see this, by the way, uh, when the wings are open too, you can see that, that black band there in both situations. So that's the way to tell them apart. And uh, monarchs are famously also distasteful to birds. That's why the viceroys want to mimic them. So they're hoping the birds won't eat them either. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with the monarch uh, story, how they winter in Mexico, and then they gradually move north until they populate the eastern side of the United States. There are different different populations in California and in Florida. But like Midwest and the eastern side of the United States are a specific population, which has been declining, but has bounced back a bit. Last year it bounced back, and then this year it was down again, but not catastrophically down as it had been. So it's, it's really variable, but they're kind of hanging in there for now. But uh, you should see them... Uh, and in September, they're going to start moving south again. You'll see all these, you see the monarchs migrating back to Mexico. It's crazy how they do, we don't know how they do it, but these uh, insects can fly all the way to Mexico from Canada as far. So uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing story. So what else do we have? Oh, this is the painted lady. It's a pretty one. I think, eh, what did I, get? I, got, I think I photographed this at Green Spring Gardens in Annandale. That one, uh, I haven't seen one of those yet this year. They're more, uh, they uh, are an eruptive butterfly. So in, in the fall, you'll see them, they kind of will wander up from the south. It's called eruption, I-R-R-U-P-T-I-O-N. So they'll wander from the south and uh, you'll, you'll sometimes see a lot of them. And there's a similar one to them also, since we're talking about ID challenges, the Painted Lady and the American Lady. American Lady, I've seen a few of those this year. But if you look, they are very similar. But the main difference you want to look for, the spots here on the side. Four small spots on the Painted Lady. Two big spots, which are really visible, even with naked eye. You don't need binoculars. You can see these on the American Lady. So two big spots on the American Lady. Four little spots on the Painted Lady. And they're both very attractive butterflies. Let's see, okay. And here's another one. This is uh, this one's related to the other two. This is a, a red admiral. There have been uh, these guys are pretty. Uh, I've seen a fair number of these around down Aquan Bay this year. So they're they're a nice one. They're also uh, they're around all summer, but there seem to be more of those in the fall also. I think they will also erupt sometimes. So that's a, that's a, that's the one on the front of my uh, butterfly guide. Yeah. All right. Here's the great spangled fritillary. This one is a really beautiful butterfly. Uh, usually out in fields. Again, a lot of them at Occoquan Bay. Although we seem to be between broods right now. There were a few weeks ago there were tons of them. Now now they they seem a little scarcer, but. That happens. Butterflies only live a few weeks and then they kind of run their course until a new brood comes in because the new eggs have to hatch and the caterpillars got to go through their instars and turn into adults. So sometimes you got to wait a little while for that. This one, uh, the way to tell these, often you'll see them with their wings closed, these big white dots here really big white dots. And that's the only fritillary 
which is there's several fritillaries. We'll go through them. They're the big, big orange butterflies. But those, uh, that, that's a good way to tell them apart. And they're pretty big butterfly. They're good size. Here's a different kind. This is a variegated fritillary. Another, again, like I said, they are orange. This one, look at here, this uh, pale band here. So it sort of, uh, it sort of separates this area of the wing from this area. This area is dark, and then you have this. So it's kind of like layers here. That's that's a good way to tell a variegated fritillary. And they're uh, they're not quite as big as a, a great spangled, but they're they're pretty good size. So I just I just like I, said, I just look for this area here, and then the light area around it, sort of bordering it. Nice one. All right, and then this is one uh, meadow fritillary. This one is a small fritillary. You'll find in meadows, well named, and fields. And this one, it doesn't have the same pattern. You can see it's got these big dots here. It doesn't have that those uh, borders. It doesn't have the, the same pattern. So it's a, a little plainer looking and uh, quite a bit smaller than the other fritillaries. So you you'll uh, and they're they're not as common either, but they're around, especially in fields. So let's see what else. Okay, here's a Hackberry Emperor. This is one of my favorites. They're called Hackberry Emperor because they host on hackberry trees, right? Makes sense. So I'm, I gave you the top of the wings here and the bottom of the wings here. And the reason I like them so much is because they love people. They love people. They'll come in, they'll sit on your shoulder, they'll, they'll sit on your head. This one you can see going, <laughs> going up to someone's toe. They, they like our sweat and our, uh, they like to get the minerals off of us. I once had one uh, ride on my head for half an hour. It was a really hot day when we were doing accounts. And uh, he stayed on my, I, I didn't brush him off. I wanted to see how long he would last before he flew away. And I think it was about half an hour. So uh, yeah, if you see one kind of fluttering around your head, uh, they may well land on your shoulder or your head. So uh, very friendly. All right, this is what we call an angle wing. One of our angle wings. You can see, see how the wings are sort of uh, at an angle, they're angular, sort of jagged. This one is called an Eastern comma. And you can see why, because when the wings are closed, it makes, it has a comma there. You can see right there, there it is. And uh, this one is mimicking what? A dead leaf. I happen to see this, I think this was at Mary Mac Farm, I took this photo. So if you see, if you see it with the wings closed, you can often see this little comma pattern here. And on here, I'll show you the difference between this. There's another one called the question mark. I'll show you next, which is this one. So there's the question mark. And here, this one has a different pattern. You see, it's got the little spot here in addition to the comma, which is sort of like a question mark. Maybe not, just go with it. It's close enough. <laughs> so, and when you see the top, he's got the extra little squiggle here. So he's got one, two, three, four spots, whereas the comma only has three, one, two, three. So um, interesting thing about these um, is that they uh, winter as adults. They'll actually bury themselves in the leaf litter. And if there's a warm January or warm day in the winter, sometimes you'll see them come out and fly around and they'll feed on sap that they find. In, in the winter. And then when it cools down, they'll go back in and go back into uh, torpor or hibernation, whatever. And then, uh, then they'll come out again in the, in the spring. So uh, there's another butterfly called the morning cloak, which does that also. So some butterflies will winter as caterpillars, some as eggs. These happen to winter as adults. So then they're uh, collectively, they're called angle wing. So uh, I've never seen it, but then there's the rare exclamation point. No, I'm kidding. That's a joke. There's not. <laughs> That's a joke. Okay. Uh, here's the common buckeye. 
So this one's actually is pretty common. You can see a lot of those, you can see them around. Um, again, they seem to be a lot more in the fall, but I see them all summer and some in the spring. Uh, they have, the, they're easy to identify. They got the big eyes there, right? They're colorful. Uh, medium sized butterfly. Okay. Here's another really cool one. This is the red spotted purple. Again, it's a fairly good sized butterfly. It looks like a swallowtail sort of, but no tails, right? So you can see this, the top, it's purple and it's got red spots. Red spotted purple. They had to really be creative coming up with that name. So, and uh, this one is sort of interesting because as you go, no, there's a, a butterfly in Maine called the, uh, is it the, the white admiral, I believe. And that one is considered the same species. I count it as different. It looks completely different, but they'll hybridize. They'll get sort of an integrate between these and those butterflies. I've seen one in Michigan like that. But these are pretty common around here. They'll usually be uh, in wood er wooded areas, like on the edges, you'll see them flying around woods. So they're, they're a pretty one. Here we go, our, our cabbage whites. This was on the mountains. What these guys are doing is they're puddling here to get minerals. This is uh, somebody dumped their ashes from their grill out on the ground. And uh, it was, I guess it was full of uh, minerals that they wanted. So uh, they went for it. So a big crowd of them. And these are pretty common. You, you, you know, you probably have seen those white butterflies flying around your garden pretty often. Cabbage whites. Some others here. These are uh, other uh, yellow butterflies. Sometimes can be a little tough to tell apart. The clouded sulfur is going to be just really like lemony yellow. And then the orange sulfur is orangey. They're not always this orange, though. That's why it's tricky. Um, if you see even a little orange on a butterfly, it's going to be an orange sulfur. So uh, that's just the way to tell them apart. Sometimes people just say sulfur species, but try to tell them apart. Um, and then sometimes to get even more confusing, Sometimes the clouded sulfurs are white, like this one, the female. So sometimes you see a white butterfly and you think it's a cabbage white, but it's really a clouded sulfur, just to make things more confusing. But uh, if you look at it, the spots are a little different. The shape is different than a uh, cabbage white. All right. Okay. Here's a sleepy orange. These guys uh, host on senna and some other things. I think sun is the most common thing. And they're, I haven't seen one of these yet, but they all come out. They're pretty, pretty uh, widespread in August usually. Although they're not as common as the sulfurs or some of the others. But like where they are near their host plant, there can be a good number of them. And again, they're orange, but they have a different markings. See, they just have like little spots on them. And their shape is a little different too. And uh, when they fly, they're kind of a tangerine color, the top of them. I don't have, and uh, they fly really fast too, which is funny why they call them sleepy orange because they're not sleepy. They're very active and quick. So I don't know where that name comes from, but uh, they're, they're, they're a nice one. You can see the, see he's uh, sucking on some uh, nectar there, his tongue. All right, here's one that can be very confusing. These look very similar, don't they? <laughs> pearl crescent, I even get them mixed up sometimes still. But uh, the, the pearl crescent and the silver checker spot, uh, silver checker spots are a bit bigger and they have a little bit different pattern. And if you get a good look, you can actually see the silvery spot down here. And, uh, and this board, again, they have the border sort of like a variegated fritillary, right? So it's, it's just, and uh, these, these are more monochromatic and they don't have the silver spots and they're a little smaller than the sleepy orange. I mean, I, I'm sorry, the silvery checker spot, right? So uh, that some, you just gonna need a good butterfly field guide sometimes to tell these apart if you're not sure. 
but uh, but just look 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 for if look for these silver spots. Usually they have it. So that that'll help you identify them. And like I said, they are a little bit bigger too. All right, here's a couple of our blue butterflies. Eastern tail blue. Actually, I have a better picture of them. Maybe next time. Um, these guys are small. They usually stay around your ankle, maybe knee level in the grass. And you can see they have the little tails here, little orange spots. Uh, the azures don't have the tails. And they're a little bit different pattern. They're, they're more uh, a paler blue. And they'll, they'll fly higher. They'll, they'll be up, you know, they'll be way mid middle of the tree level, mid tree level or, or higher. And they'll flock together too more than these guys will. So uh, what we have now are summer azures. And actually the research that's been done has shown that the azures that we have in the early spring are actually almost all of them are spring form summer azures. There is such a thing as a spring azure, but they're uh, actually pretty uncommon apparently. So most of those azures you're seeing in the early spring are actually summer azures, just an early brood of them, right? So, what else we have? Oh, here's our hair streaks. Just like the eastern tail blue, they have these little tails here, right? Um, gray hair streak, they're gray. They have the spot here, they have uh, the, uh, the tails. And then the juniper hair streak, this one's actually green. Usually there's a ton of these on the mountain mint uh, behind Merrimack Farm. I don't, I guess not this year, but uh, hopefully they'll show up for the butterfly count. But uh, again, uh, the hair streaks, you should, you should really, uh, if you can get a picture of it and you can refer to your field guide, it's a good way to separate them. So that, that helps because there are several hair streaks that'll look very similar. Here's one. I just saw my first ones on Friday. Common wood nymph. These are uh, these are uh, generally on the edge of woods or or in met meadows. Uh, pretty easy to tell. They got this big tan spot here. So and this is how I usually see them. So they like to cling to the side of trees. This one happens to be on some leaves. So that one's. Uh, this is a medium sized butterfly. Okay, here's some uh, kind of little brown jobs versions of butterflies. This is a little wood satyr. They're in their second brood now. They have uh, these uh, four spots on their wings and they're small and you'll find them in the edge of woods. Usually they're not gonna be out in fields very much, not too often. And this is another one that likes the woods, the uh, Northern Pearly Eye. These are kind of nice. You'll often find them clinging on the sides of trees, like you see here. And uh, they should be coming soon. So again, they look these all. A lot of these look similar. So it's good to refer to your field guide if you have one. I like the uh, Kaufman guide. That's my favorite. Let's see me. This one, Kaufman. All right, silver spotted skipper. We'll start some skippers. This is the easiest one to identify. It's got a big silver spot on it. And it's a pretty big, it's a big skipper too. So often there's a lot of these. I've only seen a few so far, but they're out, they're out there. All right, here's some more skippers. This is another common one, the Zabulon skipper. Skippers are butterflies. They're, uh, they're like a different family though. So, uh, or genus maybe, huh? Some, but Zabulons, a um, good field guide on these is, see this little, see how this orange area is encased by the darker orange? So you can look for that on the shoulder. And when their wings are open, they look like little fighter planes. They have this big orange area here, surrounded by a thick brown uh, band, uh, border, I mean, big border there on the orange. So uh, these guys are pretty common. Uh, again, on the edge of woods often. So uh, 
Here's some uh, more little brown jobs. Horse is dusky wing and wild indigo dusky wing. Dusky wings can drive you crazy, but uh, <laughs> these guys uh, sometimes just by time of year. Right now, it's these are the only two you'll see. There is another one called Juvenile's Dusky Wing, but it's too late in the season for them, so that helps. <laughs> but uh, you can see the horse is a little uh, lighter colored. It's got these spots here. A wild indigo is a bit smaller and darker. Again, sometimes you need your field guide to really tell them apart. So let's see what else. Oh, this is a good one. I haven't seen this one yet, but they'll be coming. Common checkered skipper. Very, very pretty butterfly. Small. These are small skippers. They're uh, often in the grass. You'll find them in their grass skipper. I think their host plant must be some of the grasses. I'm not sure. But uh, so I haven't seen one yet, but uh, they'll be they'll be coming. There's our other. These are some other skippers you might see. Again, skippers uh, take some practice. These skipper, the best field mark for these is they're really, really small. That's why they're called the skipper. And this is a fiery skipper. Saw my first one of the year at, at Meadowood last Wednesday. So they are light orange, kind of bright orange, and they have these kind of leopard spots on them, you can see. So that's a fiery skipper. And sometimes it's going to be a lot of those around in the fall also. This is a Cape May, and there were tons of them uh, a couple of years ago. All right. Let's see what else we have. Here's, here's is probably the most common skipper, the Sachin. So you see, they, they, they have, there's a whole variety of Sachins, but they usually have the spot band here, so we'll call this a spot band. And if you see the top of them like this, it's pretty easy to tell because they have this big black rectangle here. We call that a stigma. So they'll have this big stigma here, and uh, that even bleeds through. You can see it actually on this one. See, it's so big and dark that you can even see it through the wing when his when his wings are closed like that. So th this is this is sometimes you can see a lot of these. These are very common. Sachem. I think a sachem was uh, some kind of Native American Indian uh, leader or something, maybe. Anyway, here's a couple more. Hex skipper. What we say about them? Hex got checks. So you can see this guy, he has checks. So if you see a, a, a little skip, they're small. See a little guy with these checks, that's going to be a pex. Little glassy wing. Um, Again, again, skippers take practice. They, I know these all look in the same kind, of, but one thing on this guy, they kind of can have a purplish sheen. Again, they have a spot band, but one good field mark, if you, especially if you get a photo, you can see right at the tip of the antenna club, there's white. So that's a really good field mark for glassy wing. It's white at the tip of the uh, antenna club. All right, and then, like I say, kind of a, Kind of a, a, a purplish sheen sometimes, and a spot band, and also kind of a white head too. But uh, yeah, I know they all they all kind of look the same. All right, well that's all I've got. Here's another uh, red spotted purple butterfly, and uh, this one. Uh, somebody told me something like the light here was 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 really interesting, made an interesting effect. So uh, that's all I got. Let's see. Well, um, <clears throat> there we go. All right. Thanks, Larry. So anybody have questions or stories to tell? Comments? Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I guess those were all my photos after all. <laughs> <laughs> So Dave has a story. No question. Question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can, I, I came in kind of late, and I saw you had the northern pearly eye. Yes. Uh, did you have Appalachian brown? No, not on this one. 
I, I always have trouble with those two. You, you have a, you have a, a tr trick with that, the separate um, those two? Yeah, um, I think, yeah, those can be very similar. Uh, I think you, you got to really compare them in your field guide. But I would say, uh, I think the Appalachian Brown spots are a little different and they're browner. I, it's, it seems to me the pearly eye is generally a, a paler butterfly. The brown is is pretty, pretty brown, pretty dark tan brown. So uh, we saw one a couple weeks ago at Occoquan Bay. So yeah, it's it, they are tricky, but uh, I think I think also uh, pearly eye has bolder uh, marks on it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's it's the 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 quality of those bands on on the back. That, yeah, but then, I I always get zapped and I put it in an eye naturalist and I've saved northern pearly eye and somebody comes back and saying no, it's an Appalachian uh, brown. I know, especially oh. if you get one that's worn. I mean. Uh, yeah. Okay. But, yeah, just just do your best. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Beverly. <laughs> Oh, you guys must have some butterfly stories. Mike. I've got a question. Um, I'm calling from uh, out in Rappahannock. All of us, all of the master naturalists and butterfly counters have noticed this year uh, a significant uh, birth of butterflies, both species and, and individuals. Uh, have you all seen that as well, or is this just a downtime for us here, or is it something we should be concerned about? Um, no, it's everywhere. Uh, we had uh, we did a butterfly count uh, in uh, Occoquan Bay, uh, Meadowood, uh, Julie Metz area areas around Woodbridge, basically, and we uh, we had 34 species, but a lot of it was one of this, two of that. And uh, they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely down. But I think a lot of that might be because we had a really wet and cold May and even into June, I think. So we, we just didn't have enough warm, sunny days for them to really get going. And it uh, seems to me they bounced back a bit in the last few days, last week maybe. So I think they just need some more time to come back because they were late last year too, I remember. So uh, I, th I think hopefully they'll come back. Because we noticed in the early spring, there seemed to be plenty of butterflies. So just the usual number. And then those, uh, the cold and wet May hit. And uh, I think we even had some freezes maybe in April, did we? But uh, yeah, so it wasn't, uh, it had, hopefully they'll come back. <laughs> okay. It's not apocalypse now then. No, I don't think so. Although they are, they are generally dropping, you know, pesticides and Loss of habitat and things aren't helpful either. So, so uh, Kim, I had a question. Uh huh. So I was wondering if you could um, say what the top maybe five host plants are for butterflies. Butterfly, I guess. Um, I don't have all the host plants memorized, but I know. Mm -hmm. Um, they'll often use oh, grasses. Maybe Nancy about milkweed. Them. Yeah, milkweed is used by a good number of them. Um, Nancy might know that. She's a plant person. <laughs> I don't know that actually. Uh, there are there is a really good book from the Loudon Wildlife Conservancy, though. Um, yeah, it, any butterfly guide will tell you all the host plants. For the and the new butterfly guide from um, the Julie that Judy co-wrote has yeah. all the host plants right 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 yeah so there's they're out there um but it just depends like the skippers will often be in grass the various grasses um like i said uh the uh sleepy orange likes the senna monarchs like the milkweed so uh but are you thinking like for gardening what would be the best attractive yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think maybe you should think more toward nectaring, what they will attract them to, nectar plants. Well, you want to let them live their whole life if you can. Yeah, both. Yeah. But I mean, there's like so many, the, the, they're so specialized. I don't know if there's any that would bring, but if you plant milkweed, you can get the monarchs. That's that's what, that's for sure. Yeah, I've planted that's, a lot of milkweed. I have not seen one. Yeah. I <laughs> no, no. 
do the best we can. It's a good year for milkweed. I haven't seen one in my yard. But you can also, Rita, pick your favorite butterflies and plant lots of different smaller areas yeah. with the plants. Right. Mm. Hackberry trees um, attract quite a few different yeah. butterflies. And they're really nice trees, too. Yeah. I have a lot of them in my yard. Oh, that's them in right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. But yeah, I don't know of any that would attract like a whole wide selection of butterflies. I, hackberry tree. Canadian thistle seems to attract quite a few. I have a picture of three different butterflies on three different but you know three different heads but it's very invasive <laughs> yeah, but that's oh, just nectar love, yeah. yeah they love nectaring on thistle that's what i'm saying if you if you have a, a butter a pollinator garden you're going to bring in a lot of them to nectar you really want to see a lot of butterflies so uh yeah, you have I, to mix and match like i know yeah. that um the um not the pearl crescent the other one the um silver silvery checker spot, spot. The host plant for that is a green coneflower. Oh. Hmm. Oh, and they, they, and a lot of, uh, there's, there you go. And I know a lot of butterflies like the nectar on that. Uh huh. Okay. Jocelyn says Hackberry Emperor, Tawny Emperor. Oh, I saw a Tawny Emperor this year. Where? At Occoquan Bay. Very cool. We uh, actually, it's a funny story. Um, I had never seen one in the east. I'd only seen them in Texas, and they look very different in the east. So I didn't know what it was. <laughs> oh, huh? I thought it was a. I thought it. I thought it was a uh, meadow fritillary because it was so small, it's smaller than an emperor, I would expect. But uh, then we then we got a photo of it, and it, yeah, it was a tiny emperor. So. Yeah, I think the only place I saw one here is Dove's Landing. Yeah, this is over by the Turtle Pond. Turtle Pond. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we figured it out, which was good. <laughs> Sometimes we do that. When we do the count, we'll uh, uh, have a consultation, you know, where we, what do you think the skipper is? What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes when they're worn, you can't even tell sometimes. Can be a little tricky, but we figure it out. Years ago, I was at the refuge and we came to um, a spot up by the washed out bridge area where there was um, a lot of plants in bloom and there were hundreds of skippers. I mean, just oh, yeah. hundreds. Yeah. And the person I was with grabbed my arm and she goes, we're just going to stand back and enjoy this. Right, right. <laughs> Not worry about identifying all of them. Oh, I did. Uh, I was like in battle mode last year on the count, the Loudon count. We went to the winery and there were so many butterflies. There was like this row of bushes and hedges and stuff and it was just so filled with butterflies that i had another person with the checklist i just started calling them off by section i was like all right first 10 feet and i just call off every one of them and then i you know i'd be like 20 30 and then i'd move to the next all right next 10 feet and i just call them off all <laughs> like, oh my god and i see we have lots of tips on the chat yeah so um Good. after yeah, when the program is over and I download the recording, I can download the chat and I'll send it out to you all so you can read it. Good. Thanks, Jocelyn. Seems like you know, know your stuff there. Good job. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is from all kinds of people, so that's yeah, great. Good, good. Yeah. So nobody has more fun butterfly experiences. Oh, what else do I have? Here, I can tell you my story with uh, um, the snout. Uh -huh. American snout. Right. Which I was at Merrimack Farm the first time I ever saw one, and it's such a cool butterfly. Sure. And um, I was just driving at the gate, and I something caught my eye, so I stopped and looked, and there it was. I was so excited. I dove back in my car to get my camera so I could take a picture, and I came out, and I couldn't find him anywhere. I looked high, I looked low, nice I just was all over the place, and I finally decided I had to go. Yeah. So I turned around to get in the car, and there he was right on my shoulder. The oh, time. <laughs> my. That's another one that can be eruptive. You can get them coming up from the south in the fall. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they're, we see them pretty steady at Merrimack Farm. Yeah, Not yeah, yeah. Well, I was in uh, Rio Grande Valley, Texas, 
And we are in the parking lot. They're everywhere. There were dozens of them just flying around. They were on the cars or everywhere. Oh, how cool. I have a story. The first time that I grew Joe pie weed, um, I was so excited because there was, you know, about a dozen monarchs flying all over it. And I was so exciting that I was taking a video because I'm a big social media person. And I was turning around as I fell down four steps. Oh, and all oh. I did was I raised my iPhones like, I don't want to lose the video. I don't want to lose the video. You're committed to your... And obviously I lived another day, but um, yeah. Um, and in fact, for those who under know what Garden Calm is, Kim, you know who those people are, right? Garden mm -hmm. Calm, you know... <clears throat> A woman the other day was doing a typical backyard tour like Alan Armitage is doing every week and she's showing her garden and she she tripped and the whole thing went skyward and she said I think I broke my nose or whatever and it went viral in the garden calm community bumped it out that had to be the first I mean how many garden videos go viral right <laughs> um, and she lived, she didn't have a concussion or anything, but word to wise for those who are trying to capture things with your devices, better better keep an eye on your feet. <laughs> better keep an eye on where your yeah. feet are. Because yeah. it's really not worth it to uh, end up in the hospital, right? right? Well, I only do photography and I'm not moving when I do that, so. What about water? Can you create a water source to track? Um, the puddles. You can do the puddles. They're on uh, level. Yeah, not not running water, but yeah, like a uh, uh, puddle, uh, uh, standing water. They'll, they'll come in to drink, especially if it's hot. Oh, you know what really attracts um, butterflies? Poop. <laughs> so, believe it or not, uh, you get. I've I've gotten some really good photos on poop. Um, in Maine, I got. Uh, this is so Maine. Canadian swallowtails on moose poop. <laughs> we we had a neighbor with a septic field problem, and there were tons of butterflies yes, on it. Yes, yes. Wow. I love it. It's the minerals. <laughs> Another good thing is rotting fruit plates. Yes, yes. Yeah, they. Uh, when I was at the Naba Butterfly Center in Texas, they had fruit all over the place. Yep, that's right rotten fruit to attract them that was a great place unfortunately yeah. it survived the wall so far so, <laughs> so can, larry what's I, the great I... distance you've traveled to go butterfly hunting um actually it's more birding butterflies are sort of the i figured that yeah mm -hmm. um no i've been uh i've just been in the united states but i like i said i've been to washington state san diego uh, arizona maine South Florida. I did a big South Florida trip last year, but I'm always looking for butterflies at the same time. So that's how I have 175 on my list so far. So uh, yeah, it's mainly birds, but butterflies too. Um, Arizona a couple times, uh, Utah, all over, Minnesota, all over the place. So does anybody have a really exciting butterfly they surprisingly found in their backyard? Dave does. Dave does. Uh, I have a story. Uh, okay. uh, <laughs> so it's uh, what Larry mentioned about the Hackberry Emperor uh, uh, writing on his head for a half hour uh, reminded me, and I haven't thought about this for years, a trip I took years ago. Uh, I was on business and I stopped uh, for a weekend in, in Trinidad. And uh, I went to this, this place uh, called the Ace of Wright. Uh, nature center, which is a uh, nice, beautiful oh, yeah. birding location. And, uh, uh, you know, it's been my first, it was my first time in Trinidad and I was very excited to see the birds. And I went to dinner that night and, and uh, in, in the lodge and, and we were standing on, a, a group of us were standing on the veranda and this huge butterfly or moth, don't can't say which, landed on my forehead like this, right here on my forehead. And one of the guys in the group said, oh my God, I've been trying to get a picture of that for, for years. You just stay there. And he ran back to his cabin to get his camera. 
And I'm standing there with this butterfly, you know, kind of lodged on my uh, forehead. So he came back, he took the picture. Oh, thanks so much. So I, I gave him my, my name and address. I said, I'd really like to have a picture. <laughs> guy never, guy never sent me a picture well, I asked you that. after all these years, but you reminded me of that, that story. Yeah. So. Yeah. When I do tours, um, I always do a, like a photo gallery and I send everyone on the tour my, my photos, you know, and sometimes they use them in their own programs for their bird clubs. So yeah, I guess it's just, uh, just courtesy. Well, I keep a list of the butterflies I see in my backyard and I'm trying to remember what I'm up to, but I, it's in the 35 species range. Nice. And I live on a quarter acre lot, so. Yeah. Oh, I know a story. My last lifer butterfly was in a graveyard in a cemetery. <laughs> what was it? Southern Virginia. It was a gemmed satyr. Very cool. Beautiful butterfly, yeah. No, I got a pretty decent photo of it too. So, uh, although I'll be getting better photos now, I have a new camera. So, <laughs> I got the uh, P900, Nikon P900, 83 zoom. So, oh, congrats! Uh, yeah, it's nice. Thanks, Nancy. So, uh, thank all you. Right. So, I don't know why not. But uh, yeah, that was my last lifer. I was saying, uh, I was like, we were actually doing a bird, uh, bird atlas scene. But again, I'm always looking for butterflies too. So, <laughs> yep. And dragonflies, whatever. Anybody else? All right. Well, thank you so much for coming, and we hope you're back for the next installment. Good. I'm glad you liked it. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. You had half as much fun as I did. I had twice as much as you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, Norman's there. Let me see. <laughs> I didn't scroll through everyone. I didn't even realize who all was here. <laughs> yeah, Gary, I don't think Gary was here. He said he was coming, but uh, I didn't see him. That's all right. We would have had lots more stories. Yeah, <laughs> or, yeah he's out a lot more than I am. <laughs> All right. Oh, where are you going? Bye, Rachel. Hope you enjoyed it. Anybody have a good time? John. There's somebody. Uh, I don't know what that was. Some body part. <laughs> oh, let me. I can stop recording now. Yes.